Hello everyone, my name is Paulo Alves and on this video we are going to develop the navigation part of our Rio app using React Native. Subscribe to the channel if you want to follow the development of this app and let's take a look on what we are going to have built by the end of this video. Let's start by going to our app and seeing that the first page that it's loaded is the login page. So let's make a page navigation when the user clicks on the login button. After clicking on this button, we'll redirect the user from the login page to the home page. So let's open the login.screen.tsx file to do that. Here I'll find that login button and I'll inform that when pressed, the login function will be executed. This function doesn't exist yet, so let's create it here in the body of our login page. I'm going to create a constant called login, which is a function, and in the body of this function, I will put just an alert so we can see that it is being executed when I click the login button. If I come to the app and click the login button, we see that the message is being displayed. But how could we redirect the user from the login to the home screen? To do this, we can come to this documentation of the React navigation. This is the library we use to navigate between pages on our app. To install it, we have to run this command here. So I'll open a new console and I'll run the install. We also have to install other libraries that will be necessary for this navigation. So I'm going to copy these libraries here and let's install them on the command line. And lastly, we can come to the documentation and check that we also have to install this stack library from the navigation stack. So let's now use the library. For this, we will create a new component called App Navigator. I will do this here in the app folder, so app.navigator.tsx. As with all the TSX file, we will start importing the React from React. One of these libraries that we just installed has a function called create stack navigator. Let's import this function. And what this function does is exactly what it says it does. It creates a navigation stack. So let's create a constant by destructuring the return of this function. We need two components here, the navigator and the screen. So let's create our component by creating a constant its name is going to be app navigator and it will return the following code. We can start with the main component, which will contain all our pages with the navigation, which is a component called navigation container. That creates a container that will be responsible for managing the application state and also adding the navigation to our app. Now let's add to this navigation container the navigator component. The navigator component can contain some elements of the screen type as its children. It's in these screen elements that we will configure the route of our application. The screen component can have two properties, one called name, where we will identify the route, so I'm going to put login here, and another property called component, which will identify our screen. So here I'm going to use our login screen. Another thing that I can declare is the initial route of our application. I'll put the login value here, meaning whenever the user enters the application, it goes to the login page first. Of course, you change this in the future, because if the user has already logged in previously, we should keep that login, not ask for the user to log in again. I'll save it, and what we have to do now is to use this navigation component that we just created. So let's export our component so that it can be used in other components. And let's use this component in our app.tsx file. What I'm going to do is to just exchange this login screen for our app navigator. Then I can remove this import here also. After saving this file, we'll be able to see that our login screen appears in the app. It appeared with a header that's not necessary for now. To remove that header, I have to go to my navigation component and inform that its header mode is none. I'll save it and we can see now that the header disappeared. So now let's add to our navigation also the home screen. So then we can go from one screen to another screen. I'm going to create a new screen component. This new component will have the route as home and the component that we will use to it is the home screen. Now we can finally add our navigation from the login screen to the home screen. 
This screen component here injects automatically an object called navigation as parameter of our screens. So if I enter on the login screen, I can create an interface up here called login screen props. And this interface will have an attribute called navigation. I'm going to put it as of the type any. Now I can inform that our function that creates the login screen receives as parameter the interface that we just created. Finally, I can use in our function that navigation object that our screen is receiving as a parameter. So now let's code that on the press of the login button, we'll call the navigate function of this navigation object and we'll pass home as the router. I'm going to save it and now we can go to the emulator and after clicking the login button, we are redirected to the home screen. With this, we are able to create the first navigation of our app. Let's go back now and do something similar for this registration button down here. I will find the register button first and then I'm going to declare that by pressing it, the register function will be called. This function doesn't exist yet, so let's declare it. This function is a constant called register and this function, when executed, will call the navigate function of the navigation object and pass the route identified by the string register. I'll save it and we'll go back to our app and click on the register button. We get an error and obviously this happens because I forgot to declare the registration route on our navigation file. So let's do this. I will do something very similar to these two other lines here. So I'll inform that I have a screen that will be referenced by the route register and that the component that will show on this screen is our register screen. Now I'll save it and when I click on the register button, we go to the registration screen. And very good, now let's do something like this to our register screen. By clicking on the register button, the user will be redirected to the home screen. To do this, we have to go to the register screen and now declare on the register button that by pressing that button, we'll call the register function. Now let's go to the top of our file and let's create that function. This function is a constant called register and then I'm going to declare in it that Oops, we still haven't got access to our property, so I'll create an interface that will be called register screen props. This interface will have a navigate attribute. I'll inform that now our screen is receiving as a parameter this interface, and now, yeah, I have access to our navigation object. So our register function will call from the navigation object, the navigate function, and will navigate to the home route. Now I'll save it, go back to the app, and when I click on the register button, we go to the home screen. Now let's do something more elaborate, which is to go to a page and to be able to click on the back button of that page, and then we come back to the home screen. I'll now program the click on this floating button to create a new delivery. After clicking on it, I want to be taken to the screen of creating a delivery route, so let's go to the home screen and find this floating button on the code, which is down here. I'll inform that when pressing this button, a function will be performed, the go to delivery route function. That function doesn't exist yet, so let's create it up there. This function is a constant called go to delivery route, and this constant is a function that I will declare its body. We already know that to get access to our navigation object, I'm going to need an interface and now we'll call it home screen props. This interface will have the navigation object. Now I can declare that our home page takes as parameter our home screen props. I'm going to call the navigate function of that object passing the route delivery route. What I have to do now after saving it is to go to our component and to create a new route. This new route will be identified by the name delivery route and the component that will show on the screen of this route is the delivery route screen. So I'm going to save it, go back to our app and click the floating button. Now we come to the screen to create a new delivery. So what I want to program now is the action of this back button. I'm clicking on it and as you can see, nothing is happening. If I enter the delivery route screen, we see that the back button is inside the header component and I'm not passing the navigation to the header component. So I'll go to the header component and I'll inform that now it's waiting for a navigation also. 
I'll put a question mark here and this question mark means that it's not mandatory to send this navigation for now to the component. And what I have to do now is from our create a new route screen to send the navigation. And for me to have access to this parameter, we will create an interface called delivery route screen props. And this interface will have our navigation object. I will use this interface as a parameter of the screen and now I have access to it. I'm going to send the navigation as parameter of our header component. Now I go back to the header component and I can declare that on the on press function of the back button, when clicked, the go back function will be executed. This go back function doesn't exist yet, so let's declare it as a constant called go back, and then I'll use as the body of this function the props.navigation.go back function. So I'll save it and let's test if it's working. After I click on the back button, we go back to the home screen. Now let's create something different again and call this menu button that is on the header of the home screen. This menu button is also in the header component. I will start by informing that the click on our menu button will call the open menu function. Now what I'm going to do is to declare this function as a constant called open menu and let's write the code of our function. For now I'll leave the function empty and what has to happen is when the user clicks the menu button, I want this visible property of the menu to change from false to true. So how are we going to do this? I have to declare that this header component has a state and on the click of the button, I will change that state. I mean, by clicking the button, the state of the component will go from false to true. So first let's declare the state. I'll create a constant, which is an array. This array has a visible variable and a set visible function, which will be used to change the state of our visible variable. To create this state, I'm going to use a react function, which is the useState function, and I'm going to initialize this state as false. Okay, now I can declare that the visible property from our menu will respond to the visible state that we just created. And to be able to make this change, I will inform that the function to open the menu will call the set visible function that we created with the true parameter. I mean, now when the user clicks the button, what will happen is that I'll call the set visible function passing the parameter true, and the set visible function will change the state visible to true. I also have to inform that the menu will eventually close. To do this, I have to run something on the onDismiss function, which is declared right here in this menu. When this action of closing the menu is called, I will execute the close menu function. This function doesn't exist yet, so let's declare it. That function will be a constant that will modify the state of our visible variable to false. Before we test this functionality, I'm going to create some items to our menu because currently it has nothing to show. So initially, I'm going to create two items for the menu. The first item will show the deliveries that our user has created, and the second item will log out the user. I'll now save it and we can go to our screen and test this functionality by clicking on the menu button, which will then open the menu. And if I click outside of the menu button, I can close it. Now let's declare what will happen when I click on each of the menus, as for now, nothing is happening. When I click on the deliveries item, I will declare that the function go to my deliveries will be executed. That function doesn't exist yet, so let's declare it here at the top of the file. It is a constant called go to my deliveries, and when executed, we will use the navigation object call its navigate function and take the user to the deliveries screen. Now I can go to our navigation file to declare a new route. This route will be identified as deliveries and then I will inform the component that will be used when I call this route, the deliveries screen component. Now I can save it and when I go to the app and click on the deliveries, I go to the screen, oops, I forgot to send the navigation object as a parameter of the header component. So I have to declare that the component will receive the props.navigation as parameter. Now we save it and when I click on the deliveries item, we will be redirected to the deliveries screen. But realize that the menu is still open, so I have to call the close function after clicking on some item of the menu. 
Let's go back to the header component. I'll open this function and below it, I'll call the close menu function. I'll save it and now, yeah, when I click on the item, this menu will close. Now let's go back and redirect the user to the login screen when the user clicks the logout item. To do this, I have to come to the logout item and I'll define that on the press of it, the logout function will be called. This function is not yet declared, so let's declare it. It is a constant called logout, and this constant is a function that will execute something very similar to the go to my deliveries function. So I'll just copy and modify from deliveries to login. I'll save it and we can now come to the app and when I click on the logout item, I come to the login screen. Everything worked fine, so now let's create the navigation on the deliveries page. I'll first enter the deliveries page and what has to happen is that when I click on a delivery, the user has to be redirected to the screen showing the delivery details. So let me go to the file that declares the delivery page and on it we declare an interface with the parameters received by the delivery page. This interface will be called deliveries screen props. It will have a navigation property and I will pass it as a parameter for our screen. Now we do have access to the navigation within our screen, so let's inform that by pressing the card, the go to delivery details function will be executed. As this function does not exist yet, let's declare the function, which is a constant called go to delivery details. And when this function is executed, I'll call the function navigate from our navigation object. As a parameter, this navigate will call the delivery route. What we have to do now is to save it, go to the navigation file and declare the delivery route. So it's a screen that has the delivery as identifier and the component that's gonna be shown is the delivery screen. I'll save it, go back to the app and click on the card. We'll see that we'll be redirected to the delivery details page. Very good, but realize that the back button is not doing anything. So let's fix this by going to the delivery details page. I'll create an interface that will declare the parameters that will be received by this screen, which will be called delivery screen props. And for now we have the navigation. I will also inform that this page will receive as parameter the interface that we just created. And to make the back button work, I'll pass this navigation to the header component. I can save it, go back to the app, and we'll see that the back button now is working. We have to do the same thing for the delivery screen as the back button here doesn't work. So let's go to the delivery screen and pass as parameter to the header component that props.navigation. Let's save it and we'll see that now the back button works. So now we have almost the entire flow of the app done. What's missing is the click on the button of the create delivery screen. What we are going to do is to simulate that after clicking this button, we'll take the user to the delivery details screen. So the user will be able to see that delivery. To do that, I come to the delivery route screen file and I'll inform that the delivery button when clicked will execute a function called load delivery pricing. Now let's declare this function. It's a constant called load delivery pricing and it calls the navigate function from the navigation object. We'll send to it the route delivery. Now I can save it, go back to the app, click on the button and see that the navigation worked perfectly. All right, the action flow of the application won't be quite like that actually, but our intention here is to show to our customer how the application will behave. And I think we achieved this goal, right? With that, I can already create a version of the app and send it to the people involved with the application. I mean, the customers, and then they can already check out the app and we'll be able to give opinions on how the app flow is going. But there was one thing that I didn't like on this video. We didn't use the techniques of test-driven development to be able to show that our code doesn't fail. Imagine that when I change this app in the future, I program that the click of the login button takes the user to the delivery screen instead of taking the user to the home screen. On the next video, we are going to create the tests for the navigation part of the app. With those tests, we can guarantee that our code is doing exactly what it should be doing. So subscribe to the channel if you're still not subscribed, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, share this video with your dev friends, and see you on the next video.